Good morning, everyone. Is this thing turned on? There we go. Good morning. How are you? Not so sure. All right. Now, before I carry on, because I'm not here every week, this is actually my first week here with you in 2014, I need to know, have you been introduced to our new teacher? You have? I know, she's going red. I'm embarrassing her right now. She's like a good teacher. She's right up on the front row, and we're glad to have you, Alexandra. Thank you. Do you want to stand up and just complete the embarrassment for us? All right, there we go, there we go. She's joined us uh, this year. She's teaching at our Adventist uh, primary school here and uh, has got the new entrance and, and a few years beyond that too, right? So we're glad to have you on the team. Thank you for being with us. And the friends, family, friends, friends, they are with us as well. Thank you. Right, we're in uh, the Gospel of John this morning, John chapter 12. So please uh, join me in your, in your Bibles there. We're going to read a story together. A very interesting story that uh, comes, um, as all stories do, in a context. It comes as a direct follow-on from the previous chapter. So in John chapter 11, what's our famous story that happens in John chapter 11? Do you know? Without looking. It's the resurrection of Lazarus, isn't it? It is, the, it is the great pinnacle of the healing ministry of Jesus. It's the one that cannot be refuted. You know, there have been other resurrections. There's, of course, been a string of healings before this. People who have been sick and they've been miraculously healed and turned around. But here is a story in John chapter 11 of a man who dies, is buried for four days. It's, it's unequivocal. No one can deny it. This man was not in a coma. He was not in a deep sleep. He was absolutely and completely dead, his body was decomposing. That's why Jesus waits, and that, those four days when you add them up, at least four, I think maybe even a touch more, but, but um, at least four days. This man, when he comes to the graveside, the family says to him, don't roll away the stone, it's going to stink. So everybody acknowledged, and Jesus resurrects a man who's not just freshly died, but is decomposing. And he does that to sentence himself to death. <laughs> I think that, what do you mean, Adrian? That's a, that's a strange, uh, strange thing to do. That was the outcome of what he did with Lazarus. And you're going to read that right now in John chapter 12, starting with verse 1. And here's how it reads. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was who had been dead whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. Martha's doing what Martha does, right? But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. So Lazarus is now dead or alive? He's very much alive, right? And he's sitting at the table with Jesus, right? Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, Why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box, and he used to take what was put in it. But Jesus said, leave her alone. She has kept this for the day of my burial. For the poor you have with you always, but me you do not always have. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might also see Lazarus whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests plotted to put Lazarus to death also. Because on account of him... Many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Notice that the story takes place between two, what shall we call them? Two brackets or two parenthetical statements. It starts off by emphasizing Lazarus who was resurrected. 
And after the story has played out in John chapter 12 there, it ends off by coming back to Lazarus who was resurrected and on account of him, many were believing in Jesus. In other words, this was the pinnacle of Jesus' miraculous works. This was indisputable evidence that Jesus was in fact not a fly-by-nighter, not in fact a magician, not in fact just some trickster, but he resurrected a man who was decomposing and that is compelling evidence. After all, all the scribes and the Pharisees have done to discredit Jesus, he goes and does something like this, which definitively gives credence to all his claims. His claims that he's the Messiah. His claims that before Abraham was, I am. The idea that I am the eternal, the pre-existent, the creator of all life. I do not borrow life. I am the originator of life. All those claims that almost got him stoned in the past are now verified by this action, this climax of action, where he resurrects a de decomposing man. And the scribes and the Pharisees now want to kill Lazarus to put away that evidence and get rid of Jesus who has stirred the people up with this evidence to believe in him. They are losing their power. They are losing their credibility. All their accusations are now exposed for what they are. They have been made and they want to get rid of this. This is your atmosphere in which Jesus is walking around. <laughs> this is the atmosphere in which he comes to church on a Sabbath morning, synagogue. This is, this is the stuff that was going on behind his back, the whisperings, the cloak and dagger stuff, conspiracy to commit murder.